Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. Uh, the disclaimer, this video is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. So today we're going to be talking about intermittent fasting, something I've played with myself. Um, I actually found uh, decent results on intermittent fasting as far as fat loss is concerned, but it did feel like it stunted my muscle growth a little bit. So I was a little concerned about that. And I moved back to regular feeding on regular hours and found like I gained a little bit more muscle, but that's just an N1, that's just me. <clears throat> so rather than anecdotal, Let's take a look at the actual research. And that's why I was kind of excited when this study just came out a little while ago. It was published this month, uh, month of December. Uh, so this is a brand new study. And to be honest, I think it's one of the very first studies that's actually looked at long term. This was a year long study uh, looking at how the effects of intermittent fasting. Now, in this study, they call intermittent fasting um, uh, uh, what is it? Time restricted feeding or TRF. So when I'm quoting direct, <clears throat> excuse me. So when I'm quoting directly from the study, I'll be talking about TRF. And that is what many of you call IMF, which is intermittent fasting. So TRF is time restricted feeding, which is basically the same thing. It's just collapsing your eating hours into an eight hour period in the case of this particular study. So the very first study that came out, and I'll go ahead and put that up on the screen for some of you. <clears throat> Let's go to the comments section. I'll put it in the chat box uh, so you can take a look at the first study. So the first study actually looked at um, uh, intermittent fasting for eight weeks. <clears throat> now, let me talk about uh, what they looked at. I'll go ahead and put this up on the screen for those of you who want to look up the study at home. The uh, title of the study is called Effects of eight weeks of time restricted feeding, 16 8, that's 16 hours of fasting, eight hours of eating, on basal metabolism, basal metabolism, maximal strength, body composition, inflammation, and cardiovascular risk factors in resistance trained males. Um, so, what they did is they looked at these uh, pre trained, uh, so these were guys already working out. The average age was about 28, and they've been lifting for at least five years prior to the study. So these are pre-trained. So you're going to get slighter um, variations in this because they're already been training for five years consistently. They're younger males, so their bodies are pretty responsive in general. Um, so that's why this study is actually even more important. Rather than starting out with people who aren't trained or people who don't exercise or don't eat in an intermastic intermittent fasting training style um, might not get such uh, different effects. Um, so the very first one, actually, you can see it on the screen there. Um, it said uh, after the results, after eight weeks, that testosterone and uh, insulin like growth factor one, IGF-1, decreased significantly in the time restricted feeding. Now, my guess here is what's going on is, <clears throat> excuse me, food is one of the most anabolic substances there is. And obviously, your body cannot build new material without having a good input of material, food, calories, protein, carbs, fats. So uh, your body naturally won't build or secrete hormones or create hormones that are intended to stimulate both growth and, and muscle building. There's no need for them if you don't have the materials. 
So by intermittent fasting or cutting the feeding times where you're inputting nutrition only in eight hours, my guess is the body is actually responding by reducing the amount of uh, testosterone and, and, and uh, IGF-1, both needed for stimulating the growth uh, and renewal, repair, and, and anabolism or added muscle. Uh, to the to the effects. So just in eight weeks, they found that testosterone dropped by about 17% just from doing intermittent fasting. Now, for those of you who are just looking for the overall health benefits, reducing overall testosterone and IGF-1 could be a good thing, could be a positive thing. But those of you who are actually working out to get in a better body composition or better shape, it's going to be harder to do that when your testosterone and your IGF-1, both necessary for stimulating growth, muscle gains, and, and, and reducing body fat, um, are, are being dropped. This may not be the uh, ideal approach for you. So questions about whether intermittent fasting is, is actually interfering in it. <clears throat> well, what's great about this study is that they once this eight-week study was over, they told the guys, keep doing this and we're going to follow you for an entire year now this is where it gets interesting because a year's worth of data can really tell you a little bit more of what's going on and if the body is adapting and adjusting to this type of feeding and the study results really kind of indicate that that is the case um, so here's the takeaway so after a year and the follow-up they found the, uh, the males actually did uh, end up starting to eat less. So they were both on 2,900 calories. They were average weight of about 185 pounds and were doing about 22% of protein. So it's a good amount of protein. This is enough to stimulate the anabolic process, um, whereas just 10% is, is good enough probably to maintain uh, muscle, but these were looking for muscle growth and or body fat. So in the intermittent fasting group, body fat actually went down significantly. They lost 11% more fat mass than those that were not doing the intermittent fasting. Now, here's the drawback. That part sounds really good, right? <laughs> Losing a lot more body fat, 11% more body fat in a year's time that's a pretty good thumbs up. So if you're looking to actually use intermittent fasting to drop body fat, and you're not as much concerned about muscle, then that's a good thing. But here's what I am saying is that muscle is important for maintaining body fat reduction because muscle actually burns calories even at rest. It takes calories just to run muscles, like a, like a motor that's running all the time. If you leave your car idling, it's still burning gas. And that's basically even your muscle. So if you add muscle to your frame, you're burning more calories. That means you can maintain the same amount of calories, yet actually still slightly over time lose body weight. Just one pound of muscle distributed, uh, I think it's two pounds actually, uh, two pounds, two and a half pounds of muscle distributed all over your body. So just a few ounces everywhere, right? Not a whole big lot of it. Just two and a half pounds of muscle will burn the equivalent in calories of a pound of fat every single month. So having extra muscle on your frame is actually going to help you keep your body fat lower and even uh, consume the same amount of calories and still drop body fat. Once you drop that muscle, if you gain the weight back, it's going to be a worse composition. You're going to have a higher fat to muscle ratio. That means that, that fat actually doesn't burn any calories. So you can be the same weight but have less muscle you're actually burning less calories. You can be the 185 that you were, but if you have more muscle at 185 in ratio, you can actually start to decrease that fat just because that muscle is burning calories all the time. So this is why it's important and why this study is important that, that actually intermittent fasting may not be the best way approach 
to actually losing fat because you end up losing muscle. Now, here's here is the problem. <laughs> um, so we'll go back to that uh, testosterone and and IGF-1. Now, testosterone uh, is used by both men and women. So this is this is uh, regardless of the gender. We both use it for building and stimulating muscle growth. Um, that's why testosterone exists in both men and women. Uh, there's different levels um, of testosterone levels, but reducing that testosterone by um, reducing the calorie intake. So this is what happened over the course of the year. The Those doing the intermittent fasting ended up slowly consuming less calories, even though they were told to both consume 2,900 calories a day, just because in, in my theory, and this is just a theory, this is not based on the research, but my guess is that the stomach starts to shrink a little bit because it's not populated with food as much, so you get full faster. If you have a smaller area of stomach, that food is going to fill up the stomach faster, and what you do is you end up consuming less calories. Well, that's exactly what happened in the uh, IMF group. They actually ended up consuming on average six and a half percent fewer calories. Now, it doesn't seem a lot, but over a year's time, that's in a lot of calories on a six and a half percent every single day for an entire year, 365 days. That's a lot of days, a lot of calories missing from them. And of course, because of that, this led to natural rate weight loss of about 3.6%. And that's how they ended up cutting their fat mass 11% more than those who are eating the standard meal times, which is a meal at uh, breakfast at 8 a.m., lunch at 1 p.m., and dinner around 7 or 8 p.m. So that's the standard feeding group. That was the, the placebo group, the normal group, whereas the intermittent fasting was eating only between 12 and 8 p.m. period. So an eight-hour window, 16 hours of no food intake. So this could have shrunk the stomach got them to eat less calories. You combine the less calorie intake along with the fact that their testosterone and IGF-1 dropped, and this is where they ended up losing muscle mass. Um, so they lost muscle 3% lean body mass. So they lost 3% of their muscle while working out. Now, that would suck to most people. If you're going to the gym every day and working out five times, three to five times a week, trying to gain muscle using intermittent fasting, you're going to lose some of that body fat, but you'll also lose some of that muscle. A working out and consuming 2,900 calories a day and still losing muscle, to me, that's that sucks. So this may be a important consideration. Now, again, I was a fan of intermittent fasting. I liked the way it feel. I liked feeling empty for most of the day. It gave me more energy. And there were some there were some positives to the intermittent fasting group. They lowered their cholesterol. They lowered inflammation because the body is at rest, so it's healing and repairing better. So there were definitely some health benefits from the intermittent fasting. Now. For those of you who are not concerned with building muscle or uh, just want to stay in basic shape, a small amount of muscle loss isn't going to be a big deal to you. Although remember, having that extra muscle does mean you burn calories. And as you age, this becomes even more important because you want a little bit more muscle, both to maintain your strength and also to, to keep that fat burning process going. So this is interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and put up the link for the uh, second study, but if you guys can see the full study, and this one was the year long study. So it's the same group of people, but looking at it for a year, and I'll go ahead and put that one on the screen. So this is a study, and it's, um, and the title of the study is 12 months of time restricted eating TRE and resistance training improves inflammatory markers and cardiometabolic risk factors. So reducing cholesterol, reducing inflammation, these are all actually very positive things. So if you're looking more for the health reasons for working out, then, then, then time re restricted or IMF intermittent fasting can possibly work for you and lead to greater weight loss, especially fat loss. Uh, but know that you may be giving up a little bit of muscle in the process of it. Or 
you can utilize uh, nutritional supplements to try to counterbalance that. Uh, BCAs, for example, BCAs are known to actually slightly bump up uh, uh, IGF-1 levels. Now, this may actually counterbalance for the IMF. Remember, most BCAs, like our BCAs, the clean BCAs, actually are little to no calories. So you can utilize them during um, uh, periods where you're during the fasting and it's really not breaking the fast. Or you can use our unflavored in, in, uh, in, in uh, water, for example, um, and, and there's basically almost no calories at all. Uh, so there's those options to, to use that to try to offset the reduction in testosterone. And obviously we have a product called Cell Block 80 that can help boost testosterone levels too. Now you're working against your body a little bit where you're telling your body not to build anything because you're not consuming any food. And then you're telling your body, oh, let's go ahead and keep these hormone levels at normal. So there's a little bit of challenge in the back and forth and your body may, uh, for each individual, you may have varying different results, but there are approaches to do that. And then of course our pre-workout it's also shown to uh, help uh, boost testosterone levels in men by up to 21% um, using uh, a, an amazing uh, herb called uh, Indian globe thistle. But it's also got uh, ashwagandha in it too, which has got nice research behind it as well for building muscle and maintaining muscle and increasing uh, overall testosterone as well. So lots of different approaches that you can use herbs or nutritional supplements to help counterbalance possibly some of the negative effects or some of the undesired effects i should say not not necessarily negative uh, but undesired effects if you're really looking to uh, build a physique or build muscle or add muscle both for uh, better overall health uh, because it increases and keeps metabolism going well. Um, so it can allow you to actually burn more calories over time. Um, so it's an interesting study. Uh, good things and maybe not so good things, just depending on what your goals are. And that's why I like sharing this research, not to give a slant like I am fasting, uh, internet fast, uh, intermittent fasting is bad and you're going to lose muscle and try to scare you. No, I'm just going to give you a straight up study, let you choose to see if it's right or wrong for you, tell you all the positives as well as the potential negatives so that you can make the best decisions for your particular case. And then also what other natural products uh, and, and supplements that you could use to help maybe offset some of these things if that's not your goal. Um, so I think there's still a place for fasting, whether it be intermittent fasting or um, a typical water fasts. Uh, definitely, if you're doing that, get a, a work with a doctor, someone like Dr. Frank Sabatino, who is an amazing plant-based doctor, a vegan, good friend of mine, and he does supervised fasting. So work with a professional if you're considering doing water fasting. He's one of the best. He's certified in, in uh, water fasting and juice fasting, and we'll show you the wrong and right ways to do things so that uh, you make sure that you're protecting your health and doing it in a way that gets your best benefits. Remember, sleep heals the body. Well, when you are going periods without consuming food, you are basically allowing the body to rest. That's when healing and repairing can do. And that's what good things can happen in there. And as we see in this study with the intermittent fasting group, they've lowered cholesterol. They lowered their cardiovascular risk. So they had some improvements, some nice improvements in, um, in different uh, factors. Um, but the offset is you may need to be a little bit concerned if your goal is to build muscle uh, and you're working out, keep your calories up, maybe utilize other products uh, like BCAs or natural herbs that will help keep testosterone levels in a normal range so that you can continue to um, maintain at least or build uh, if that's your goal, the muscle and keep the physique that you're really looking for for health or uh, for competitions and things like this. Now, I've known that 
almost every time I've gone in to compete and went into carbohydrate depletion, uh, that my testosterone levels dropped pretty significantly. Now you do this for a very short time in a competition, but it's always a little bit scary, you know, seeing my <laughs> testosterone levels drop so significantly when you're competing because you're going into a uh, really low carbohydrate, which tells the body to start shutting down some processes because it thinks it's starving. Um, it makes you look really good for the stage, but it can bottom out your testosterone levels and really make it hard to uh, uh, maintain the muscle. And that's one of the challenges that uh, competitive athletes have in trying to get on stage and look their sharpest and tightest but still maintain as much of the muscle mass as possible. So this is some interesting data, both in the short term, the effects that it showed in just eight weeks, as well as the long term. So it was a year long study worth of data. Take a look at both of these studies. I'd love to hear your feedback on is IMF working for you, intermittent fasting? What have experiences have you experienced with intermittent fasting? Um, did you, like me, experience actual uh, slow down, stop, or even a loss of muscle over a period of time with intermittent fasting? Uh, I'm sure some of these things can be overcome with proper ways of getting the proper nutrition in uh, and maintaining a, a specific style of training that is geared to stimulate that muscle growth even more, what I call adaptive style training. Adaptive style training is you you changing up your training, high volume training, heavy weight training, uh, medium weight, low rep, uh, slow rep training. You keep changing this and this causes the body to keep wanting to try to adapt to what you're doing and can maintain you in a muscle growth status without having to mess with hormone levels too much or anything like that. That's something that I use on an all the time basis. That's how I can maintain my muscle size is 17 inch arms, even though I'm turning 59 uh, next month. Um, I hope this information is helpful to you, helpful to make the right choice for you. Again, I'm not saying intermittent fasting is bad or good. There are positives and negatives about uh, this based on this research. I like that this research really showed hormone changes as well as body composition, fat to muscle changes too as well. And I like that they had both an eight week and a whole year long study to look at that. And it's confirming the effects on the hormones. A 17% drop in um, testosterone and IGF-1 definitely will do its thing. Now, I wanna point out one last thing before I go. It was interesting, even though the intermittent fasting group lost muscle size or lean body mass. They actually lost muscle tissue in that one year period. They maintained their strength. Now, this is pretty cool because I believe this is the adaptability of our muscles. Our muscles, though, even though they may get smaller, may still be as strong. And that's because contractile tissues can have different forms, uh, fast twitch, uh, um, type two muscle fibers, type two A, type two B, type one muscle fibers. These different muscle fibers can maintain the strength without necessarily maintaining the size. So losing a little bit of uh, muscle size may not necessarily, as this study showed, they actually lost muscle mass, which is the lean body mass, the actual muscle tissue, but they didn't lose strength or strength maintained throughout the whole year, even though they were consuming less calories, had less body fat and lost muscle. So that's really good to know about the adaptability of the human body, that it can maintain the strength as long as you keep exercising. Now, use it or lose it still, <laughs> still plays a role. We know that if you don't exercise on a regular basis, you will lose strength and that can be very important to you, especially at the end of stage life where um, falling is one of the leading causes of hip fractures, which then results in one of the leading causes of death in those in nursing homes and elderly care. So you don't want to leave, lose that strength as you age. You want to maintain that strength to keep you from getting into situations that can cause long term or even possibly death um, situations. So. That's some great information that I want to leave you with. Again, I'd love to hear your feedback on your experiences with intermittent fasting as opposed to uh, standard eating. My uh, 
my takeaway of this is that if you are, every time you eat, you're stimulating anabolic. You stimulate insulin, which is anabolic or muscle growth building. You, you increase IGF-1. You increase uh, testosterone levels when you consume food too as well. Because this is just a bigger trigger, which is basically saying, hey, body, you've got some building materials. Now go build some. No, now you can go build. When the food is not coming in, the body says, okay, there's maybe a period of fasting here. We may not have the materials. So let's don't build muscle because muscle burns calories. And our body is very cautious about calorie regulation. Too little calories, we starve to death, we die. Too many calories, we can store too much fat and that becomes a health problem too as well. So our body is really effective at trying to keep this balance of calories in to calories preserved intact. And that's why the body won't build muscle if there's not enough nutrition to support that growth. It's not going to build something that is um, calorie intensive. Remember, muscle burns calories even at rest. So if you're not using that muscle, your body will quickly tear down that muscle and get rid of it because it's spending calories. It's like your money. You don't want to give your money over to something that you're not using because it's just spending your money. So you shut down that app if you're not using that app because it's just costing you money. That's the same with muscle. So it's really important to know that if you want to build muscle, you have to put in the nutrition in a timely fashion so that your body says, yep, we've got surplus. Yeah, there's plenty of calories in here, plenty of nutrition that we need to grow this. We can add some extra muscle because we have an external stimulus of exercise saying, hey, this is really important. This person needs this for that exercise. Therefore, we can add that muscle. So nutrition, calories, and the exercise. Those are the three pieces to help you keep growing and keep building. And now through this new study, that timing of when that nutrition and calories comes in may be pretty important to you depending on what your goals are. I hope you enjoyed this. I'd love to hear your feedback on this. Thank you for joining.